Moshi Moshi my gamers and welcome back to Honkai Star Wheel. You are about to face the final and most challenging stage of the Sogula Festival Audition, the Superstar Showdown. Only they who have last in the wing will be able to become the next Pinnacle Festival Superstar. Will that person be yours or will it be towering? Sean, personally, nobleman who easily secured the top score in the act in the acting challenge, stay tuned to find out. Today, we're gonna finish up this test. As much as I want to keep Kafka on my team, I'm gonna keep Himiko in the meantime. To be safe 100% from uh, what we're dealing with at this point. I mean, I think I could have beat him in the first place last episode if I had Himiko out, but nope, I did not. Okay, the final place to be in. So, oh, where are we? No, this is for the. Oh, wow. Well. That pose when she does that. Who <laughs> love the heel position? Last place to be in shot. Okay, we're done. No, I want Astro fan, not TV. I'm sessing. This is probably a boss fight I'm doing with next. Ooh, two bottom numbers. Could have been like last episode, but it didn't end like that. So, Ooh, we're together. Congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars That's of Sunday. this year's Charmony Festival. Before entering the Grand Theater, I. On behalf of the organizers, extend my sincere congratulations Sunday. to you. What are you doing here? Wishing you joy under their radiance. Hmm. All I get are oh, sincere congratulations. We are my st Wait, no, 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 I shouldn't say that. The hell are you doing here? As previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about Penacony and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. <sighs> Just as expected. We acknowledge the perspective of you, Nameless. Penacony does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming <laughs> obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated, equality non-existent, common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Ultimately, only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Penacony would you prefer? A dystopia for the survival of the fittest, or a sweet dream paradise for all? Hmm. 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 Mm, there's nothing wrong with being the fittest. That's not the point! Don't let him mislead you! Mr. Sunday, even if the members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Penacony's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Penacony. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, it'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. This way, we'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with, and the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. That is precisely my intention. With all present, Let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices, our ideals and beliefs, and our final course of action. The only path to take. Okay. 
which is a while ago. You mean to say that for the longest time there have been scoundrels who would use this the charmed festival that I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition? Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the entire planet of Penacony. And then everyone in their dreams will be unable to awaken. Hmm. This is indeed surprising to me. Hmm. The dream that can't be the dream master. The effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charmony Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold the position of great authority. Do you have any suspects? I'd like to ask, did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? Hmm. I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me. Quite astonishing indeed. If I have offended, the Astral Express extends its sincere apologies. But the current circumstances are dire and leave no room for meticulous inquiry. We're doing this out of concern for the Dreamscape's safety. So, if you could, please alleviate our concerns. Dream Master, it's just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song. Just per the arrangement. <sighs> Sunday, Robin. I've watched you two grow up and know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can surely be lauded as their most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. The magnitude of this matter is enormous and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, the entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Someday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead so that no lies may be concealed? I will do as you command. Robin, could I entrust you, you to be present as a witness, to document the truth, and to proclaim my innocence, so that all slander may be utterly dispelled? I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on earth, just as it is in the heavens. Oh, triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Let us begin. There is nothing else to prepare. Understood. Hmm? Question. Have you devoted your life to your god? Never worshipping other gods? Who was I doing this Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself? Oh, don't get dream master, okay. Their admonishments. Naturally. Have you strayed from the path expected by your god, betraying their name? Never. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god, coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself? Never. Then, a final question. All right. What's the follow-up question? Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past, present, and future? With the Eon as my witness, if I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vows, may I be cursed in accordance with divine law. They have seen your faith, and have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced... Just a moment. What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. The God you both mentioned, are they truly 
Shipei. Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were king, embracing solidarity and unity under their light. All duplicity is laid bare before the harmony. Such a delicate and complex symphony. Which other god could perfectly harmonize this if not for the great one? She may perfectly harmonize it. Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, spreading solemn and reverent hymns throughout the universe. Later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the hymn of harmony. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang, being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when you find yourself alone and without allies. Hmm. So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause, Sunday. Please afford these two an opportunity to rest. What? No! Sorry, Robin. It's just you. I did not wish for you to know this. It's a pity that things have turned out this way. So... This is the true reason I can't sing. The shadow that envelops Panacone is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization, and through harmony, we obtain order. Motherfucker, why? Unbelievable. To think that there would be remnants of the order on Penacony. What have you done with Mr. Yang and Miss Robin? Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions make you an enemy of the Astral Express. Should we need to stand against the Nameless? It would only be myself and the Oak family involved. But we haven't reached that point yet, have we? Your efforts for the justice of Panacone are evident to everyone, and have been widely observed. <sighs> Give the game back to us now! Oh, I intend to. But that hinges on the outcome of this negotiation. If it is the Order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands, and just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape, least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the Order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. The strong wield their blades against the weak, and the victors push the vanquished to the brink of life. Natural selection. The world abides by this principle, establishing the well-being of humanity atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we, or rather, I, possess the power to put an end to this farce. So you've decided to resurrect a dead eon? No one's ever That's kind of creepy. Ugh. If Miss Himiko is interested, 
Let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. I've always firmly believed that people can understand one another through peaceful means. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's path striders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Words can hardly do justice to the beauty of that ideal. So, come with me, everyone. Let us retrace our steps and see once again where this road leads. Huh? Where'd he go? Welcome. This isn't any location in Penacone's dreamscape. It's my inner world. The reason the scenery before you remains unchanged is because your consciousness has drawn on similar concepts to fill in the gaps. Hmm. Hmm. Who in the white mind will expose their inner self like this? That means... Did you do the same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray-haired guest has experienced it before. So he should understand what it entails. Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings. Which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. Now, everyone. Please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. Okay. From Boss this fight. point on, oh, you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. I believe after going through similar predicaments, well, seen this vision. you'll be able to better understand my thoughts. Let's begin. The first decision. A story about a baby bird. We know this already. story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster. And the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the Dream Master of Penacone, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in later on. Robin and I lived the time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood's yard, we spotted a fledgling Charmony Dove all on its own. Mm -hmm. That baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers, and it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath, having fallen into a shrub. Probably abandoned by its parents, we decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold, with fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So. I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered, was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, what choice would you make? Stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell, or build a cage for it, and feed it, giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. I eagerly await your answer. Ooh. Oh, talk to what I think? Okay, I'm gonna... Hold up a second, let me collect this. We got disc, walk of fame. Okay, I'll talk with my girlfriend last. Okay, let's talk to Himiko first, the Adotio. Here we go. Hey! It looks like he really has no intention of imprisoning us. If it's just a quiz, I suppose it's fine to humor him. Back to the question. I would personally choose to build the little Charmony Dove a cage. No special reason. I do think that a fledgling should have the right to fly into the sky. 
But if it can't even live to that point, then there's nothing to talk about to begin with. So she chose the little one? She chose the white one? I would pick the left one, honestly. Him, a white march. What do you think? That guy just casually throws this kind of question at us? What exactly is his deal? But fine. I'll answer, I guess. If it were me, I guess I'd choose to build a cage for the little Charmony dub. After all, Can leaving I it there, oh, it's bound to get hurt by wild animals or something. And that'd just be too sad. Are they picking that one or the left one? I'm gonna look at <gasps> Oh, baby, speak. I can't decipher his intentions right now, but based solely on that question, I would probably choose to build that dove a cage. Even if I was gonna release it back into the sky, it'd have to be strong enough to fly first. If so I'm the all pick white. It, I fear it'd never get the chance to fly ever again. Okay. So, okay, I already talked to everyone, so I'm gonna say just go for the white one. The picky white one, apparently. What's funny is I robbed here, I'm alive, bitch! Alright, let's pick the white one. Oh, the poor cage defeated those girls because the wolf of home. Make the decision. I'm happy to see that you made a choice similar to ours. If your mind is made up, let me reveal the outcome of this choice. We passionately nursed it back to health, preparing only the best food for it every day. We even preened its feathers. Later, on the day that Robin left Penacony, we opened the cage door and let it fly back into the sky. I watched it for a long while by the window. Probably about three or so days. In those three long days, the little Charmony Dove tried again and again to spread its wings to fly into the sky, but fell to the ground. Only to keep trying, finally. On the hundred and thirty-seventh attempt, it succeeded. But its attempt did not go perfectly. <gasps> After flying unsteadily for a while, it fell to the ground. Unable to grasp the direction of the air currents, the fall shattered its wings. It writhed helplessly in my embrace. But it was all for naught. Finally succumbing to a painful demise. And in that instant, our tender care our given love and hopes. They all became the inevitable push that sent it to its death. I deeply regret the choices we made. Next, let us head to the second decision. This time, it's the story of a dream chaser. Oh, uh, why? This story happened when I was appointed as Bronze Melodia, a position exclusive to the Oak family charged with listening to the problems and vexations of dreamscape residents and providing them with the relevant guidance it was during that period this is when he was in the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the dreamscape joy sorrow arrogance regret the complex tapestry of human nature that formed the world and i was fortunate to catch a glimpse of it he was a dream chaser. Oh, I was right. Got and it. an illegal stowaway. Just like the rest of them, he came to Panacone in search of a better life. Except that, to most people, the price he paid. I suppose you could say it was everything. He told me, I sold everything I could at home. The house, the land, even his two children. That sucks. He said he could not afford to raise them, and that at least they could eat if they lived as slaves. He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune, and enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy, and he was sniffed out by those pig-headed hounds. After hearing the Dream Chaser's story, 
I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way, at least he could live peacefully. But I was still too naive to the ways of the world. I did not anticipate that You're still I, dude. was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. You're still naive, I'll dude. I'll tell you the outcome soon. For now, I'd like you all to make a choice. Will you do as I did and try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit so that the Dream Chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? Or will you remain silent, leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels until his inevitable judgment arrives? I look forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. Now, actually, when the game I'm guessing, yes, I am. Himiko, I'm gonna start with you. You speak. A chaser story. If I acted out of kindness, I would probably ask the bloodhounds to stop their pursuit and lend them a hand. But what cruel repercussion would this choice result in? I think. Okay, she's speaking this Sunday one. Sunday must have been deeply impressed by the limitations of the strong defending the weak through this incident. Yeah, I like how Robin's like, I like how um, Robin's, I mean not Robin, <laughs> I mean Firefly is like being a camel woman, even March kind of. Okay, March, you speak. It seems illegal stowaways are really quite common on Penacony. But that guy in the story... I don't think he deserves any sympathy at all. He sold his kids to chase a dream. Even if he intended to go back for them, it's still insanely irresponsible. Agreed. I thought, there's only one choice. Let the Bloodhound send him back home. This person deserves to be punished. Ah, so Marsh shows the left one this time. Okay. I like that. I like my girlfriend. So close to you in your face. <laughs> this question. Surely it has some connection Actually, to the baby look. bird story. And this connection is precisely the breakthrough Sunday aims to use to persuade us. I'd probably choose to ask the bloodhounds to cease their pursuit. Okay, so two for the right, one for the left. Sorry, Mike. Ping light this time. It's like, ah, oh, man! Why will you choose to convince the bloodhounds to stop the pursuit? So that the Jingle may live peacefully and realize his wishes? I'm honored to witness you arriving at the same decision. Out of respect, I'll share with you the dire consequences that my choice back then brought about. First, the outcome. He attained major success. After avoiding capture, he ran a business for a few years, very quickly making a name for himself, elevating his status. He might not have become a tycoon like old Artie, but he was considered a character of excellent repute. Now then, did he realize the wish he set out to achieve? No. The last time I saw him was in the real world, where the hounds were going to permanently exile him, and I was the accompanying Bronze Melodia. The mission was simple. Listen to the criminal's repentance. He told me the reason he was in this predicament was because he conspired to usurp the head of the Alfalfa family. When I asked him about his two children, he instead responded with a question. What children? In the end, my heart aligned with the harmony, and the good deed I dared to undertake held no value, turning instead into a wrongdoing. It created a lamentable oppressor and countless oppressed individuals. As to your choice, I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. Next comes the third and final decision, and the story this time is my own. Okay. This story happened the day I was appointed the Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current Dream Master, and as for his wish, we had a private conversation. What surprised me was that the Dream Master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents, and it was a letter from my sister. So it's not this bullshit, Oni-chan! The letter contained the usual pleasantries, 
anecdotes from her travels. Nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? My sister, of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? To help you grasp the full scope of this issue. Do you know where Robin is at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Correct. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? A stray bullet? What? A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To spread the word of the Harmony. And to save the lives of that planet. She personally made for the front lines. She hoped to ease the people's suffering with song, and was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately, stray bullets show no such compassion. Is she all right? If the operation was successful, she hmm. should probably it's the son be of my prefer than the other one. In the field hospital, by the eon above. The bullet struck her neck directly, yet possibly as a reward for her consistent deeds of harmony. Is that what she can sing? Arteries, Fuck! she attended to your outstanding tasks, it'd be advisable to write her back as soon as possible. That's her neck! Is that what she can sing? She got shot in the neck? Those damned savages! I'll pack my bags right away. My gratitude for bringing this to my attention, Mr. Gopherwood. Now you understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments, don't you? How could this happen? This Robin... Devastating. It's all in the past, so please don't worry. I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies, limitations, and predicament. As grandiose as the strong defending the weak sounds, Many times. It is nothing more than wishful thinking. Likewise, I've prepared one last question. One last choice. But rest assured, this choice will not have any grave consequences. Because eh, this is we don't know that. We don't know. Of imagination. Probably is. A nightmare that has haunted me through countless nights. If you ever had the opportunity to make a choice like I did, would you still support Robin's journey on the path of harmony? Yeah! A hundred percent! Why was he stop? Nah, I'm just left. Why was I just right? Nah, -uh, I'm picking. Okay, I need to talk to you guys first. I often feel like I've dreamt of similar scenes on certain nights. In the dream, I see blurry faces. I don't know who they are, but I sympathize with all of them. Fighting for survival against some unfathomable force. Their confusion and fear are lucid to me. But I also remember they chose never to give up. Just like Miss Robin. Yes. If Mr. Sunday's question leaves you puzzled, you should find the answer from your own experiences with each trailblaze. Dangers and tribulations will surely follow. But would you ever back away? Would you stop March and Don Hung from reaching their next destination? I believe you have an answer of your own in your heart. Oh, I do. It's like... It's, it's, the, it's the left one, obviously. I'm just talking to all the first five time moving on. March, I believe you know the answer. Why? that happened to Miss Robin. The strong defending the weak is a great mantra, but if I had to pay such a price, I... I don't know what I'd do. Hmm, you don't see. All right, my baby, what do you say? Miss Robin's courage is admirable. And here I was thinking she was just another superstar celebrity. But the fact that she's also Mr. Sunday's younger sister 
No, I doubt he'd wish harm on his own flesh and blood. No matter how grand the ambition. Yeah, I messed up. I'm picking the left one because why not? It seems right. Of course, make the decision. I see. Now what, a boss fight? I am now aware of everyone's stances. Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. Can I kick his ass now? The plight of Panacone cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only be established through the order where the strong govern the weak. I know the suffering of being tormented, the turmoil of losing your way, how sorrow and even despair set in when matters don't work out. All of this causes me unending pain because this is not what happiness is at all. We must teach the weak how to live a happy life. And this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches, but in definitive terms, a way of survival that belongs to everyone. So what is your definition of living a happy life? Huh. Good question. Human consciousness is fundamentally an illusion, a cage known as self-worth. People lured in by this illusion make mistakes, yet still ask that external influences bear the burden. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus, the amassing of these individual cages culminate to form a prison. A place dictated only by the rule of survival of the fittest. Nature is always accompanied by predation and sacrifice. Its antithesis is known as order. That is what I want to do. Unite people's happiness under the banner of order. They won't need to make bitter choices any longer, nor face the weaknesses of humanity. They can cast aside their primal instincts to build a haven for mankind. <laughs> Simply describing thoughts is far too abstract. So allow me to provide a simple example. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and long weekends that exist on some worlds. During these hard-earned rest days, People are given the chance to extricate themselves okay, like, from the I'm like, can I just punch him now, please? Allowing a certain I'm just looking at him, and their souls. I'm like, can I just kick his ass now, please? I know he's a suspect. And it is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. They can live out their lives happily during these brief intermissions. It's just a pity that two or three days are still too fleeting compared to the span of a lifetime. From where I stand, society's ideal system should be seven rest days. Following Sunday, there should ensue a second, a third, and indeed an infinite procession of Sundays. This should be the face of the new world. Idyllic, eternal, peaceful days. And thus, every person can return to their base selves in this utopia. Some gaze in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating the distance between us and the isolated world of Pagana. Meanwhile, some seek refuge in quiet corners, holding one another, unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. There would be no need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way can humanity face the inevitable end with the purest of spirit. Living a life of dignity. This is what it is to live in bliss. Miss Firefly, you who are stricken with entropy loss syndrome, you of all would surely understand this. <sighs> Like a flawless theory. <sighs> but 
What is the price to attain all this? The cost is minute. Merely a personal and eternal sacrifice. If this paradise is to be maintained for everyone, someone must remain trapped in solitary wakening until the end of the cosmos. Wakening? Which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means forsaking reality, correct? It is not forsaking, but transcending. Flesh, blood, sorrow, weakness. If the physical is the root of spiritual suffering, it is only logical that we defeat it. But in this supposed bliss, people won't have defeated their demons. The chance to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them. In other words, it is an escape. That's another way of understanding it. But there is no shame in escape. On the contrary, the seeds of escape exist in everyone's hearts. Don't you agree, Miss Firefly? And as to why we sleep, it is because we are afraid to awaken from our dreams. But this is not in conflict with the grand plan. Only in acknowledging this can we truly understand the frailty of human nature. And from there, show compassion and protection. I... I admit that you are a born leader. Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. But unlike you, I live for the self. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. The That's want why. To escape may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, it is not up to another to decide. Perhaps in your mind, you also view me as weak. Ah, oh, ha ha ha! That's why Firefly. Because I don't think so. Because you are a dick. That's why, babe. I has said her piece. The Astral Express will also naturally give you our answer. We'll leave it to you, just as Mr. McHale instructed before. Tell him our choice. I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you. Just watch! Not long ago. What is this place? Does this place ring any bells, Misha? I... I don't know. But I feel a sense of deja vu. What is this place? It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express by a nameless. But weirdly, when we entered it... It was completely empty. Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that dreams are formed from memories, and a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know Panacone best among us. Hmm. I... I don't know much about dream bubbles, but... If you want to figure out what this mansion is, I'll do my best. I'm counting on you then. Uh, Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. Hmm. Hmm. This place feels a bit of a A exactly. little bit. This is where you and Firefly encountered death, which we now know as dormancy. Oh yeah. Considering its connection to dreams. She didn't die. We know that. It's not surprising. So that was by the way, life, and she's alive. Yay. The question now is, who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So identifying them is crucial to us. We're drawing closer to the truth once more. Let's give Misha some time. As I believe he'll unveil the secret of this dream bubble. All right, but there are doors all over the place. Which one should we choose? 
Do you have any idea, Misha? Hmm. I guess... Maybe this way? A big Misha with this? <gasps> hey, I'm no. I'm just, I'm just gonna be <laughs> still firefly. I'm not entirely sure, but let's give it a try. Wait up, Misha! I'm being one for this, cause why not? Wait, you managed to choose the right door on your first try? Interesting. Weird. This place is quite different from the hotel. But I just. I feel like I've been here before, and even lived here for a while. If I remember correctly, there should be a fireplace down that hallway. Clocky and I used to sit by the fire, listening to the crackling of firewood. And, and the room on the other side was the toy room. I loved spreading out all the toys from the box on the floor, Making up stories for each of them. Hold on. This doesn't make sense. Didn't I grow up in Dreamflux Reef? So... What is this place? This could be a case of amnesia. Don't worry, Misha. It's common for everyone to forget certain aspects of the past. Those memories haven't vanished. They're just lying in the depths of your mind. We can surely get them back, since this place seems familiar to you. Why don't we explore a few more rooms, and see if you can recall anything more? Yeah, then let's check out the rooms I just mentioned. Okay, left and right. Yep, it's the angle stuff on the right side. Oh my god, always been the one key, boys. All right, left. Yeah, look at that, he was right on that spot. Mikhail, that's the name? Now we all know him as the Watchmaker, so who is he talking to? Do you know anything about it, Misha? I'm sorry, I don't know much about the Watchmaker, but Mikhail... Anything special about that name? Mikhail is... is Grandpa's name. Grandpa? Do you mean you're the Watchmaker's grandson? But we haven't heard anything about the Watchmaker having descendants. And the name Mikhail is not rare. Perhaps it's merely a coincidence. Could you tell us more about your grandpa, Mikhail? Yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. He didn't want me to call him Grandpa because that would make him sound old. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mihaly and Elise, both renowned seafarers. Every time he came back, he'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. <sighs> I want to become a great adventurer, just like him. It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. So, perhaps it's just a coincidence? So, where is your grandpa now? He went off on a new journey. And it's been quite a while since I last saw him. <laughs> so, where has Clocky gone? Did he leave to protect Dreamville? So you need to keep yourself safe too. Okay, Mikhail, I promise you. You guys see those words popping out? Mm, memories forming. TikTok. Something TikTok. 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 Oh. Oh, yeah, toy room. Look at this. I heard some noises from the room. Origami Bird? That's a friend of mine. You and Origami Bird are friends? Yeah, it's a member of the Compass Crew, uh, just like Clocky and Miss Mirror. And there's more than just one origami bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who look the same. They follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. Sailors? Can origami birds be sailors? Could you tell us more about the Compass, Misha? The Compass is a ship bound for the New World. Clocky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger, 
Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story. But in the Panacone cartoon, Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. Weird. I... I clearly remember... Clocky arrived in the New World in the end. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. Hmm, probably. I think... I hear the sound of water. Oh, God, you once mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. Protect you from harm. Protecting Dreamville. Just like you did with Clocky. All right. Open! Hey, hey, hey! hey. Don't, close, don't close in front of Robin's beautiful being looks. Open the gate. All right, let's go. Now, so a sponsor. Look, there it is! Oh, we're here. The water resembles a precious jewel embedded in the dreams of all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Have you recalled anything, Misha? Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, Overlooking the sparkling waves, he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side, and the difficulties at sea didn't seem quite as challenging. <sighs> you know, I quite understand such sentiments. Hmm. Uh, you're talking like an elder. <laughs> I'm not an elder! I was just being a bit sentimental. Perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, the fountain in front of his house serves as a compass, leading him back to his cherished ones. Yeah, while Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made, into the pool. Back then, I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would always laugh and say I was still too young. Uh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a seafarer and has nothing to do with the watchmaker. Yeah. Based on Misha's recollections, the scenes in the dream bubble appear to be his childhood memories. But this raises more questions. According to Misha, he was clearly born on an oceanic planet and led an ordinary life. With no connection to Penacony at all. Could this be... some sort of... metaphor? Perhaps the sea refers to the memory zone. I'm sorry. I don't know, but... My memories keep pouring out uncontrollably. Like water flowing from a fountain. Perhaps I'll... I'll remember more things if we go further. Yeah, it seems like that's so far. Did I... did I just... No, I heard something. What was that hood? We're going to the opposite side, Is this right? Very important? No. I wish to share the button. We should turn left here. Share your button. Okay. Huh? Something feels... Take you... ...different about this place. This yeah, is it. totally. I remember this corridor. Hmm, right here? I want to go too. Up ahead is. Grandpa's study. Oh, it was in don't go. Room, All right. I saw him the last time. What? What? The atmosphere in this room feels totally different. Misha, you finally come. He's like, huh? Clocky, you're here. Huh. Yeah. This is the room where we first met each other. Are those books on the bookshelf log books left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back. He'd place a logbook on the bookshelf in his room. 
they contain records of his expeditions to every corner of the world. He described our world as a fountain. At some point, the sea started to gradually swallow up the land where people lived to ensure that everyone had land to settle on. He had to continue exploring the sea and search for the source of the rising seawater. On that day, is that a ticket in his bow tie? Study, telling me that he was embarking on another journey. Wait, is he? However, is he with us now? I could sense the gravity in his expression. It's not confirmed, but he's wearing that ticket in his, in it, his uh, bow tie. It was the same look I had seen on my father's face before his final voyage. I asked him if I could go with him, but he said that my adventure lay elsewhere and told me to stay home and patiently await a certain sound at the door. What sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky, an ocean of stars. He spoke of a train that transports children with a desire to venture far away, traversing the sea of stars without ever stopping. He said that he knew the crew on the train, and that he had asked them to take me along. He said the journey I had always dreamed of would start there. A train? Could it be? It's... it's the Astral Express! I... I remember now. Grandpa's friends are a group of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by a star. Then, he gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure, appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, but assured me that the watch would guide me. He said... As long as I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. And then, it was as if I heard the distant sound of a train whistle echoing throughout the room. Exactly, Misha! And then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Yeah. I think I can still find the way we took back then. Oh, mm, yeah. Like this, right here? This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're supposed to find the exit. But where can we find the last piece? Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. Hmm, check the inventory. Hey, the shape seems to match. So this shard is also connected to Misha? Looks like we're just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate. Let's go! We got the piece. That's a one. And, uh, you got tons of round, actually. That's a two. And that's a. That's a three. And then that's a four. Ooh, look at that. Hands! The show begins. Oh my god, my f. Robbie, you can see you later! Okay, let's go enter the dreamscape. Touch it. it open like pussies! This. Is it. this. Is my room of clocks while I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage. Walter gave me this workshop, and it became my secret base. Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass, embarking on adventures with my companions, Clocky and Miss Mirror. In search of the new world, I... I was born and raised here. So, this building in the dream bubble is your childhood home? Yes, but not exactly. To be more precise, this dream bubble itself is my home. <laughs> Looks like you've remembered everything now. Wait, wait! Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, too bad. I don't know either. Marge, do you remember when he mentioned a clocky that only he could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? 
And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. The answer lies in the Astral Express. His experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with Clocky. Hmm. Yeah, I noticed that too. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message left by someone for the nameless. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now, take a moment to recall. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? Uh... Aquan. Wait... Uh, no way! That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble is the place where I was born. And I... I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory zone meme. I should have stayed here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather the stuff inside ran away and the whistle you heard. Was the sound of the Express arriving at Pentacony? That's one way to see it, but I believe there's a longer story behind all this. It's best for Misha himself to explain all the details. How about we start with your name? Now, should we call you Misha, or...? Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, please allow me to reintroduce myself. I was born on Lushaka, in the Presmere system. Adopted by seafarers Mikhail and Char. They gave me a treasure. A name that carried their hopes. Mm-hmm. Mikhail Char Legwork. Or simply, Misha. Hmm, Shoda. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name. The Watchmaker. No way, what? So, you're the Watchmaker himself? So the ones we witness from Sunday, that is not really the Watchmaker, that's really him. Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. Dead. I am only a reflection of his life. Aww. As for the child who has been with you, he's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. A friend of Clocky. A young apprentice. And a future mechanic on the Express. And this also marks the beginning of his journey. Devoted to the Trailblaze. At the, At the end, end of, of the, the journey, journey, I left, left this, this little flame, flame which, which I so, so cherished, cherished, in, in my, my deepest, deepest dreams, hoping, hoping to, to pass, pass it on, on to the, the nameless of, of future, future generations. generations. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. <laughs> because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it. And that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in his dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't we? Well, I have a sarcastic friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's what every nameless has to go through. But in the end, you found me. I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. If I may apologize, the Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's nothing more than a baseless rumor. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Esdana. 
where my friends and I built the original Penacony and fought for its future ever since. I've been moving forward all my life, doing what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end, and I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. So, if you ask what's left within this worn-out train engine that can be called a legacy, I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Now that you're well aware of the current situation of Penacony, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you. For the path of Trailblaze is never paved by others. All I have for you is a story and two gifts. I want to give you my pocket watch. That's... It has accompanied me throughout my long journey, guiding that naive child forward, and has been blessed with the presence of so many great people up to this day. And my hat, too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never end now. It's time, time for, for you, you to make your choice. choice. Once you've made, made up your mind, mind open, open that, that door, door and, and enter, enter the long dream of an old man. Hmm. I'll be waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. Oh, the bolt disappeared. All okay. right, everyone, let's make a decision. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. Hmm. Hmm. I'll choose the trail, please. Of course. We've come this far. Surely there's no other option than moving forward. In that case, it's unanimous. Then let's proceed together to the end of this dream and tell Mikhail our decision. Oh uh, yeah, let's move forward. Anything else on here? I don't see anything to do, so let's go forward. Now, we are out. Open the gate! Someone has to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Please, don't go! And if you must, please take me with you. Don't leave me alone! Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't you always wanted to be a better adventurer than me? Now go! Board that train and start your journey! Where are you going, Mikhail? I... I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I've promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so... I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. Don't worry. You've got what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our next stop. <sighs> I... I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiernan. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go towards true freedom. Hanunu needs us. Don't worry. Not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if I leave the Express, our path of Trailblaze will continue. Yeah. I knew you wouldn't stay on the Express forever. Leave in peace, my friend. And, uh, take this with you. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. Uh, but why? When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. 
take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to... write to us. Where are you going, Watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Panagoni. So why can't it be me? Because you're all we have! Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Penacone if we lose you too? But what will happen to Penacone if we don't find a way out? Ah, Tiernan. How could I ever forget him? I've spent countless sleepless nights asking myself why I didn't go with him back then. We nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. But if, and it's a big if, if I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next watchmaker. Hmm. Where are you going, old man? Oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Wanna hear it? Oh, come on! Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but you're the last. Where does Gallagher hero speaking? Panacone. Interesting, Gallagher. If you die too, the secret of the Stellaron will go to the grave with you. Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Panacone, so I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Estalla. We'll organize a festival using the Watchmaker's legacy as a facade, and send invitations to the entire cosmos to gather people here. So... a desperate struggle against the family? Desperate? <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging, but what hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well... Whatever you do, remember, make sure to send an invitation to the Astral Express. Mm-hmm. Misha! Huh. Where are you going? Oh, it's you, Clocky. Take me to Dreamflux 3. Last night, I had a long dream about the day we met. I want to write down that dream. Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember how you got your name, Clocky? Of course! You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watches grew up with you and were your best friends. Yes, but what I didn't mention was... There's a funny misunderstanding behind it. I was a kid, and there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. It was with my grandpa, guiding him on his sea voyages, and leading the way in his every adventure story. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that too. And that's when you appeared in my dreams. Yeah. Every night, we boarded the compass and set sail together. But you know what? It wasn't until the day my grandpa gave it to me that I realized it wasn't a pocket watch at all. It was... A compass. So, your name should have been Compassy. And the Watchmaker is just a nameless. So that's the end. <sighs> We've arrived at Dreamflux Reef. So, where to next? I'm just walking. You know, Clocky, I don't think I'll be going anywhere else. We're here again. So I'm just walking so slow. Can I but shut up? Okay, I'm true. I need to walk forward. Okay, we jog. Just gonna walk towards the body. Oh, this is where he sits down. Where it's under the moonlight. I've traveled far enough. And it's time for a little break. Oh. 
So, we'll set out again. When you're rested? <laughs> no. I'll stay here. And then... This is where it ends. This is... Where it ends? What do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah, that's what I said. So now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed to be? I've been following you, Misha. <laughs> you're acting weird today. <laughs> if you're feeling down, we can just do what we usually do. <laughs> With the clockwork. <laughs> no, I... I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork... Yeah. It resolves all problems in this dream. So... Do you know what clockwork actually is? Hmm. I'm... Not quite sure. Well... Everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually, they gather the courage to make bold decisions. Whether it's calming, joyful, angry, or, or sad. All they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork, the will of the trailblaze. <laughs> hmm. Clocky's hands spin around non-stop, indicating confusion, frustration, and weakness. But ultimately, people still need to move forward. Just, Just like, like your hands, hands. Always pointing ahead. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. Trailblazing Ooh. means taking paths your predecessors... With Firefly! This is so sick! The Penacony and Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. Dad looks like a boy. Why does it look like that? Too? Looking silent Sunday. What's the problem? I hmm? can't believe that Eon would cast a glance at Penacony at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Or perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even impresses an eon. Well, there might be another possibility. Perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the fallen eons, who will hold the future of Penacony. If that's the case, on behalf of the Dream Master of Penacony and the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to all of you. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Penacony Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on center stage. Since the future of the Stellaron, Penacony, and even the entire cosmos is at stake, let's draw a conclusion there. In all fairness, if you truly believe in Akavili's path, then show me their courage and determination. Sunday? Ooh, yeah. Hey, we finally got what we want. I mean, we got the next one. The next harmony path. That's cool. Switch the harmony path. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Level 80. I know. Currently, start trial already? Damn, not yet. Hold up. Let me actually. Do I have any like use? Oh, the level ones. You know what? Give me this bond. Yeah, I'm not using you any moment. Oh, I'm gonna unveil. My subscribe, I'll see you on the other side. You know.